Hi, and welcome to Everybody Has a Story. I'm Titania Nguyen, and we're sitting here today with Secretary Norma Manette, the former mayor of San Jose, a representative in the House for 21 years, the Secretary of Commerce under Bill Clinton, and the longest ever serving Secretary of Transportation under George Bush. Secretary Manetta, thank you so much for joining us today. Not at all. I'm pleased to be here. During World War II, you were interned under Executive Order 9066 in both the Santa Anita camps and Heart Mountain. How has your experience of internment shaped the way you think about policy? I only saw my dad cry three times. The first time was on December 7, 1941, because he was an immigrant from Japan but he came to love the United States of America. And he couldn't understand why the land of his birth was now attacking the land of his heart. The second time I saw him cry was on May 29th of 1942, as we were on the train leaving San Jose, going off to Santa Anita, the racetrack. So the impact on him as, as a insurance who owned an insurance business was tremendous and uh, very disruptive. Uh, and it affected essentially 120,000 people. So how did that shape your thoughts on policy? Well, it, it uh, made me much more sensitive to make sure that when I, when I became a member of a public body like city council, mayor, and member of the House of Representatives. I vowed that I would always look out for the interests of those who were underrepresented or not represented at all. And because uh, who do they turn to for assistance when something adverse happens to them? And a lot of people just don't know which way to turn. So I tried to be that that comfortable receptacle for them to come to talk about whatever their issues might be. What kind of lessons do you think America has and hasn't learned from internment, especially considering today's presidential election and campaign rhetoric? Well, sometimes as I listen uh, to uh, the candidates, I wonder, are we regressing in terms of what advances we've made in terms of race relations or immigration policy or economic policy, social policy. And when I think about the 1960s and the, and the riots and, and the demonstrations, and yet out of that came the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And, uh, and these were great pieces of legislation that really advanced the country forward. So we've seen progression uh, in a positive way uh, since uh, those times. And yet, in listening to some of these uh, presidential candidates today, I wonder whether or not we're sort of in a regression, uh, starting to um, move back to the 60s and the 70s. So that really bothers me. Uh, I don't know how a candidate can talk about deporting 11 million people because um, they're illegals, because in that group are U.S. citizens who are children of those uh, immigrants who came and were subsequently born. So you created the TSA after the events of 9-11 in an attempt to balance, you know, the liberties of Americans with keeping them safe. So 15 years later, or almost 15 years later, how might you evaluate the program now, especially in terms of the disproportionate policing of Arab and Indian Americans? One of the reasons I like to point to the success of the Transportation Security Administration is the fact that we haven't had a major disaster since 9-11. And as we were putting together that whole issue of how to conduct security operations and still protect the civil rights of everyone, one of the tenants in that whole 
number of issues that uh, were going to be the guiding principles by which TSA would be doing their work. The first one right at the top was no racial or ethnic profiling. In other words, someone may be, get pulled out of the line because of something that happens, but they can't pull them out of the line because they have a beard or the turban or they, they look different. Uh, and uh, because that's what happened to 121, 120,000 uh, people in 1942. Some people may get mistreated um, or they may feel they're getting mistreated, but then that to me is a training issue. I don't really think it's a, a deliberate action on the part of TSA as they're doing their security work. The current state of transportation in America is pretty grim. What might be the way that you'd convince America to really care and take action? You know, that's a great question because transportation is so basic to everything we do. Everything we eat, clothes we wear, whatever we do every day is dependent on transportation. The food didn't get to our table, it didn't walk there by itself, it got there by transportation. And so it really does frustrate me that here is something so basic and yet people don't acknowledge the importance of it until it's, until it's not available to them. A bridge collapses, uh, uh, the uh, road isn't built congestion increases. And then people then complain about it. Well, the Congress just passed recently and the president signed into a law uh, a six-year new transportation authorization measure. So to that extent, at least they've laid some groundwork for the work that has to be done in the next six years. That's really reassuring to hear. I'll probably feel safer driving home. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so thank you so much, Secretary Mineta. For a Republican candidate, it would probably be John Kasich. I don't think it would be a fun choice. It's a good question. I guess whichever one is most likely to lose against whoever the Democratic candidate is. Donald Trump seems kind of funny, so...